whatever cutie little near traditional robot with scrolls that I had in mind <laughs> was not going to happen. Um, so yeah, it hurt a lot. <laughs> and then I again was stupid. Please don't come for me for it either, please. I know. <laughs> and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be talking all about um, all of my tattoos. Um, I have seven of them now. Um, I started getting tattooed maybe a year and a bit ago. Um, so yeah, I'm just basically going to start from the beginning and talk about like the general experience of getting the tattoo done, um, pain, uh, meaning, and like inspiration and stuff. So, um, I got my first three tattoos all at once on the same day um, and I actually have a video about that already but I guess at that time I kind of just wanted to like get a tattoo and like start getting used to the idea of like being a tattooed person so I wanted to get something that was like small like cute like like a low risk design if that makes sense like something that I thought um, in a couple years time I'm not gonna be like what was I doing uh, so I decided to get a little uh, UFO spaceship on my one ankle um, and then a little planet on the other ankle and they're in like um, like old school 3D blue and red color. I also got the Google Chrome dinosaur, the little game that you get when you don't have an internet connection around my ankle. Uh, the idea for that was actually just totally random. Um, it just came to me and I was like, I wonder if anyone's done that before. And I googled it and I couldn't really find any where it ran like all the way around like a wrist or ankle. Um, and then when I decided to get my tattoos done, I was like, I'll just get that one done as well. Cool. Pain wise, they were super easy tattoos. The general experience was good. It was good, except for the fact that the tattoo artist was really late. Uh, we did it, it was super like chilled out, and we were all like chatting and bantering and my friends were with me. So the experience was positive. Cool. Uh, the next tattoo that I got was my little um, cards back piece um, and I decided to get that to tattoo done because the artist was in town he had recently moved out of town and he was back in town um, and I was like cool there's an artist here um, I know him I know his work so let me jump and get something done so I like reached into my catalog of ideas of things that I like want to get tattooed and I decided to get this one um, um, it is on I guess my ribs, sort of. It's like more on my back. Um, and I was expecting it to be kind of a difficult spot because it's so close to my ribs, but um, it really was not that painful at all. Now, the experience of getting this tattoo done is kind of one of the reasons why I'm making this video. Is, it's like I think a lot of um, people who like know a lot about tattooing probably would have like not gone through with this tattoo based on the build up to getting it done. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, firstly, so I messaged this guy on Facebook and I was like, I want to get a tattoo done, when are you free? Um, and he just, he gave me a slot, he was like, I'm free at this time, come through. And I was like, okay. I didn't really know how that interaction was supposed to play out because when I got the first three done, I sent him little pictures and he was like, cool, I'll draw them up when you get here. Um, and that's what he did, so I thought maybe that's his like MO. He like, you know, you show up at the time and you give him the design and he draws it up and there you go. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did. I showed up with my design, which was, it was just like cobbled together from images from Google Images and stuff uh, on paint.net, super low tech. I was like, this is my concept and I'm bringing it to the artist. And then we get there and the artist starts drawing a stencil, like right over, like tracing out what I brought. Um, and internally I'm like, I expected him to ask me some questions about style. Um, I don't know, I just, I figure like, it's it must be uncommon for people to bring their art in and the tattoo artist is supposed to tattoo it directly. I feel like most times people want the artist to do like a rendering of the art that they brought in. Um, but anyway, he start, he stencils it, he finishes stenciling it, and he puts the stencil on me, and he's like, does that look good? And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so another brief note about that story is that I also really messed him around the day before. 
Um, I actually missed my appointment, which was supposed to be the day before, and he rescheduled um, because I couldn't find his place and my phone was broken and I couldn't use Google Maps and I, yeah. Um, so I felt really bad and I just felt like I shouldn't be like a high maintenance client. <laughs> I didn't want to inconvenience him, I didn't want him to have to redraw the stencil, but that's all very silly. <laughs> I feel like most people would have told me to walk when he started or to at least communicate to him. It is my fault. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm not blaming the artist for this. Uh, I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I, when he started stenciling my design, I should have been like, hey, I was hoping we could maybe work on this a little more. And if that can't happen, then I will have to skip this one and get this tattoo a different time. And when he put the stencil on and I wasn't quite sure, um, I should have been like, I'm not sure, and then I should have bailed. Um, that said, all of that said, I am fine with this tattoo. I like it, and I know that if I wanted to get it like upgraded into a cooler piece later on, I could do that. Um, and I don't mind it. I really don't. Uh, there just are like, it's it's. There are a couple of things that I would have done differently. It would have been smaller than this. Um, I I think I probably would have wanted like bolder, stronger lines. Um, also, when he put the stencil on, he had my arm like slightly forward so that he could get to the space. And then he, he was like, make sure you're standing up straight, make sure you're like relaxed. Um, but I was relaxed with my arm pushed forward because the tattoo is like under my arm. So in order to get there, I had to move my arm forward. So now when the stencil, when I am actually relaxed, the stencil stretches. Um, <laughs> so only when my arm is in like a weird uncomfortable position is the tattoo actually straight. Um, but anyway, like I said, I like it. I like the way it like peeks out my clothes and you can always see like the top of it. I don't mind that it's stretched. I don't mind that it's not perfect. I'm chill. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You guys must be able to hear the Hardy Dars. My dad once said what if Hardy Dars are just afraid of heights. Ah! <laughs> um, on to tattoo number five, which is my little earth boy. So I got this uh, tattoo because, I mean, the idea behind it was kind of, I wanted to go from space and bring it closer to like me, I guess, and that's earth is our planet in space. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, also just conveniently, it also happened that I got this tattoo around the same time that um, I started thinking a lot more about uh, like environmental concerns, um, made the transition from vegetarian to vegan, and also just started trying a lot harder to do more for the planet. Yes, so that's kind of the meaning behind it. Um, the experience was good. I had looked at his stuff before and I liked his color work. It was pretty painful. I would actually, yeah, it was really painful actually. I would probably say that this was my most painful tattoo. Um, so yeah, it hurt a lot. <laughs> and then I again was stupid. <laughs> um, I think I think that I probably washed it wrong on the first day, and then I later realized I wasn't supposed to wash it on the first day. So I don't know. Maybe that's what did it. But um, on the first night. This tattoo hurt so bad. It felt like a burning hot piece of coal was like resting on my arm the entire night. I was like shaking and like twitching um, and I couldn't sleep at all because it hurt so much. I tried my best to like baby it, but um, yeah, it didn't, it, it got a lot worse. It got like pretty infected. And I had to, Go on a course of antibiotics and get a uh, antibiotic cream for it. Yeah, so I think that that might have drawn some of the like vibrancy of the color out of it. Um, but at the same time, like there are places where it's pretty patchy. Also, my earth is like not very round. <laughs> um, there are lots of like wibbly wobbly bits um, around the circumference. So again, it's not a perfect tattoo. Um, yo. Cool. I just saw something up with my peripheral vision. Ah! I'm home alone. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on from 
the Earth Boy. I actually think I might have done these in the wrong order, um, but my uh, little rib piece, uh, which is actually a stick and poke, um, from a really cool stick and poke artist that used to work in the town that I live in, but now works in Cape Town. Um, he is Jinx tattoos on Instagram, I think. Um, and I just, I watched him like start out um, tattooing and he, he just got so good so fast and it was getting to the time where he was going to leave town and I was like, I really, really would like to get a tattoo by this artist before he leaves. Um, and so yeah, I, I got an idea that would work as a stick and poke and I was like, cool, that'll work, slap it on me. Um, he was so nice. I sent him a message saying that I want to get a tattoo by him. He asked me a, a bunch of questions about style and references. He drew up a design for me um, before we even settled on a quote and a booking day. So he sent me the design and I gave him some notes on it and then he made some changes. Um, and then we settled on pricing and a date and we did it at his house. And like traditional tattoo artists would like stick their nose up at this. But at the end of the day, I'm happier with this piece and the experience of getting it done and most of my other pieces I felt comfortable and like he had music playing it was super chilled and like casual and relaxed um, but he's very professional and very good very clean um, and he gave me all the healing stuff for afterwards healed with absolutely no problems um, and yeah it was a great experience Um, and then the last tattoo that I have to talk about in this video is my newest, uh, my new son, my robo boy. <laughs> um, gosh, what a roller coaster it was getting this tattoo done. Where do I even start? Okay, so I sent the guy, I had the idea for this tattoo sitting in my brain for a couple of months, and I wanted to figure everything out um, before I got it done. I needed to know who was going to do it, I needed to have the money freed up um, and know when to do it and all that good stuff. So I decided to do it for my birthday, uh, I went the day after my birthday and I'd been watching this guy's work on Instagram for months and months and months and months um, and he, I think he just does like such cool um, dynamic designs and like amazing color, full color pieces. Um, so I was like, cool, I would really like to get tattooed by this guy. I guess this guy is just the kind of tattoo artist who, like, needs a lot of creative freedom. Um, he's gonna give you his own interpretation. He, he only really wants to do cool pieces and pieces that he's really excited about. And he wants to be able to put his, like, own stamp on it. Um, and I guess I didn't really know that going into it, but I am very happy that I actually went in for a consultation this time before the time. Um, what a concept. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just like, I got a sense of him as an artist, which I think is what helped the most. Because it was at that point that I realized that whatever cutie little near traditional robot with scrolls that I had in mind <laughs> was not going to happen at all um i could like he was talking to me and he was explaining like he was like pointing at his arm and he, he was like so the you know the robot's feet will be like around here and i was like whoa 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 there cowboy because i thought the tattoo was going to be about so big like cut like just sort of the top of my like bicep i guess you know like sleeve would cover it kind of thing um but he had other ideas after that i just like i sat down with myself and i was like this is not my tattoo anymore, this is his tattoo now. <laughs> Somebody is going to put a cool art on me and it's gonna be big and it's gonna be awesome and I'm gonna rock it. Um, and I had a week to like sit with myself before the um, appointment. I also, um, <laughs> I put on like a bunch of temporary stick on tattoos just to like get a feeling for something being on my arm and I had that for like the week leading up to it. Sounds silly but it actually really did all help get me in the right mindset. Now, you know, maybe a different person would have made a different decision there. I'm sure there are people who are of the opinion that like, um, the, the client should always work, walk out with like exactly the tattoo that they had in their brain. At the end of it I was just, I was looking for the artist to just like, do his art on me and it would still have the concept, the meaning behind it that I needed to convey. 
Um, and I love how it turned out. I'm so glad that I trusted him. Um, I think it suits me a lot better even than the tattoo that I had in mind would have. Hello, it's me editing and I left a bunch of stuff out here because uh, I had to go check on my baked potato. Hello. Thank you. Hi, baby. Come say hi. Look at the people. Hello. <laughs> Okay, so healing on this tattoo was awesome, um, although it got off to a bit of a rocky start, and I will actually talk about that for a second because I'm not sure that everything went quite right there. Um, so because it's winter, I was worried about healing this tattoo because I'd have to be wearing sleeves and stuff because um, it's really cold, and so I asked about I asked them if they do um, like dermalize. Um, or Sanoderm or whatever, and they did, they do, um, and I only found out, like, at the till when I went to pay, that, um, you pay 60 Rand per square of Dermalize, which is fine, I don't mind paying for the, like, healing stuff, it, it is a big tattoo though, and he had to use a lot of squares, um, and then also, there was a part where the Dermalize just like, for some reason wasn't sticking to my skin. He tried a couple of times, and he even added like an extra square of Dermalize to try and stick it down properly. And then he says, try keep this on for at least three days, uh, push for five though. Um, but the moment that I got in the shower the first time, um, immediately like a bunch of water got under the dermalize because of that one little spot where he couldn't get it to stick um and the tattoo looked gross it looked really awful and i was like maybe this is normal you know the ink moving around under the dermalize like i'm not expecting it to look like clean and pristine um although like i've seen other people heal tattoos with dermalize and it didn't look anything like this um, so the next morning I messaged the shop and I was like, hey, um, it really seems like some water's got under my dermalize and should, like, what should I do? Should I take it off or should I leave it on? Um, but I kind of in the interim already decided that I was going to take it off. So I took it off and then I started to heal it like I normally do, um, which is I wash twice a day with, um, uh, I use the unfragranced Dettol soap. Uh, hand soap and then <clears throat> I was kind of alternating between using Panthen which is baby nappy cream and um, just unscented aqueous cream just like switching between them but anyway yeah so I messaged both the artist and the shop itself and listen I don't know I don't know what protocol is I don't know how things usually go out there in the world but I feel like if my dressing wasn't applied properly and then was not able to actually fulfill its purpose because it came off on the first day. It couldn't have stayed on longer than that. Um, and it was meant to stay on for three to five days and then I had to heal it like normal. I feel like then probably they should have offered to refund me for the Dermalize. Um, I'm not a professional, so I just, I was like, okay, I guess I'm not getting my money back. I'm not that sort of, I guess I'm not that sort of person to, you know, fight over the money I've already paid or whatever. But like, the, if you think about it, 60 Rand a square of Dermalize, and he must have used at least 10. So that's like an extra 600 Rand on my tattoo's price tag. I guess a warning to you, don't get ripped off. <laughs> um, or I don't know, let me know down in the comments. Do you think, do you think that the tattoo shop was like should have been obligated to give me my money back for the dressing. I don't know. But anyway, other than that, the healing on this tattoo went exceptionally well. Um, even though I had to heal it the regular way instead of using Dermalize, it actually didn't give me any problems even when I wore sleeves. Um, no pain, no discomfort, almost no itching, like scabbing was done in just a couple of days. It was awesome. It was actually like so surprising. I got this tattoo done on the weekend of my birthday like I said. 
so and I had a lot of things planned for the weekend and I was like I really hope that I don't screw up my weekend by being in like loads and loads of pain but it was actually so good and so gentle and so quick so awesome gotta put a jacket on it's so gold Ooh. the meaning behind this tattoo is pretty convoluted uh, I got the idea for the tattoo when I was driving in town with my best friend um, and there's an intersection in the town I live in and it's got like a really annoying set of uh, traffic lights um, and at a certain time the lights stop working um, and at first we were like oh the lights aren't working um, but then we adapted and the town worked way better without them. That whole intersection was just so unnecessarily complicated by the system of traffic lights. Now, <laughs> in South Africa, we refer to traffic lights as robots. Stop at the robot, take a right at the second robots, and everybody knows you're referring to traffic lights. When eventually the lights came on and I was driving with my friend in the car, I was, you know, I was mad about the lights and I was like, heck these lights, uh, uh, let anarchy reign, no robots, no rulers, bleh. Um, and we kind of both looked at each other like, that's cool. <laughs> then I thought about it and I was like, what about like a little tattoo, no robots, no rulers, with like a little robot. Um, but it was just a seed of an idea. So yes, the tattoo is related to anarchism. Uh, I also like to think of it as just like a kind of warning, I guess, against um, people in positions of power who lack empathy and are like robots. So that has been all of my tattoos. I hope that was vaguely interesting. I like watching these kinds of videos. Um, make good decisions when you get tattoos, kids. Don't be like me. I've made a lot of weird decisions. Please don't come for me for it either, please. I know, <laughs> like I know that I made the decisions that I made and that they led to the outcomes that occurred and I'm perfectly at peace with my body art, so don't come for me. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much for watching this video, guys. Um, if you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up. If you like me and want to see more from my channel, you can click the subscribe button down below and I make new videos sometimes. Thanks for watching. I love you. Bye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that was exhausting.